freelancer, you're bound to come across a few interesting client types. And in this video, you'll discover five clients you want to avoid. You'll learn how to identify them and how to get away from them if you're already feeling caught. Plus, at the end of this video, I'll tell you how you can get one of the best resources I've put together for new freelancers. So be sure to stick around for that. Hi, I'm Lauren Golden here with a new episode of Free Mama TV, showing moms like you how to start and run a successful freelancing business from home. Subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified when I post a new episode of Free Mama TV right here each and every Tuesday. When you're building your freelance business, there are three really important things you need to have. Communication, expectations, and boundaries. Now I talk about these three things a lot and it's because they're really important. When you communicate, you tell people what you can and can't do. You give them the information they need to make smart decisions for themselves and their businesses. When you set expectations, you clarify exactly what you're going to do and when you're gonna do it. Again, this makes it possible for your clients to know what's going on so that both of you can make decisions that work for you. And finally, boundaries. You have to set them and you have to stick to them. You have to communicate your boundaries and set the expectation that people will respect your boundaries. Now, I truly believe that all disappointment comes from unmet expectations. And you can see how communication, expectations, and boundaries are all closely related and critically important in your business. So now let's take a look at the five client types who have a bit of a problem with the whole communication, expectations, boundaries things. But first, here's a quick question for you. Have you ever had a nightmare client? What happened? Tell me down in the comments below. One of the most dangerous clients out there is the scope creeper. It starts off like any other project. Hey, I need you to design this page on my site for me. Or can you write this bio? Or you sign a contract to organize your client's inbox. But then the client comes back with an additional request. Actually, we added this section to the page. So can you design that too? My coach said my bio should be longer. Can you do that? So I also have this other inbox with an additional 27,000 emails to organize. And from there, things just snowball. You're fielding daily requests. And when you push back, the client acts totally surprised. This is all part of the same project. What's the problem? Business is about being flexible. Nope. You need to head off the scope creeper from day one. Anytime you have a request that's beyond what you initially agreed to do, you have to call it out. Now, you can decide that you're not going to charge for it, but you do have to be super clear with your communication expectations and boundaries. Sure, Miss Client, I can handle this. Now, it's outside the scope of our original agreement, but I'm happy to include this in the project as a one-time courtesy. If there are any other changes to the scope, I'll need to bill those at a $50 an hour rate or whatever the case may be. That way, you're nurturing the relationship and also establishing your boundaries respectfully. Another scary client you might encounter is the midnight lurker. And yes, he's just as terrifying as he sounds. You're heading up to bed after a long day when your phone pings with a text. It's your client. He's having an emergency. You ignore the text because it's 1030 at night and four seconds later, your phone rings. You ignore that, but Google helpfully transcribes the voicemail and sends it to you. Why haven't you replied to his text? It's an emergency. And before you even make it up to your bedroom, he's also left you messages on Facebook and Instagram for good measure. Yikes. The best way to handle the midnight lurker is to be exceptionally clear about your availability and then stick to that. Resist the temptation to reply to the emergency in real time. During business hours, send a calm reply and explain that you check your accounts during business hours as explained in your contract. You are totally within your rights to ignore the messages unless the client is specifically paying for after hour support. The midnight lurker likely won't respond to subtlety, so be sure to be firm and clear when you do respond. Okay, the third client you wanna avoid is the boss. This is the client who thinks you're an employee. He drags you along to irrelevant meetings, thinks you belong to him during the work week, expects you to be constantly available during business hours and more. Again, 
This is on you to communicate boundaries and set expectations properly. You need to be super clear about what you will and won't do and refer back to your contract as needed. If your client is trying to tell you when, where, and how to work, that's crossing over into employee territory and that could actually affect your tax status. Usually reminding a client of this simple fact will do a lot to get them to back down. Okay, next up, have you ever encountered the micromanager? These are the clients who constantly look over your shoulder to comment on your work in progress or want to tell you how to do every step of the process from start to finish. Often these clients have been burned by bad freelancers in the past and they've become micromanagers because of those experiences. So what can you do? Well, reassure the client that you understand what's happened before and you're a true professional. Preempt the micromanagement by sharing your plans and process ahead of time and keep the client updated on progress throughout the project. If the micromanager can't let go even after a successful project or two, you may have to move on. And finally, I guess you could say we've saved the worst for last. <laughs> the final client you wanna watch out for is the cheapskate. Look, everyone loves to get a discount, but this client takes things way too far. Maybe he's asking for free samples or he wants to own your intellectual property without paying for it fairly, or they want you to help them out because they're a new and struggling business owner. Communication, expectations, boundaries. You are a professional freelancer, so you have to act like one. The client's budget is not your problem unless you wanna make it your problem. If it costs $1,000 to hire you, that's what it costs. And if this client isn't willing or able to pay for that, you can probably find a different client who is. If you agree to take on a project for less money because the client is nice or really can't afford more, I can pretty much guarantee you that you're going to end up resenting the work, the client, maybe even yourself. Whew, we covered a lot. And now that you know the five types of clients you want to watch out for, it's time to put your communication expectations and boundaries into practice. Underneath this video, you'll find a link to the free mama guide to freelancing, which has everything you need to start your freelancing business the right way. Also, if you want to join a community of mamas, just like you, I have a Facebook group where thousands of mamas come together for support and action taking tips and motivation. As always, if you like this video, please let me know by liking it below, subscribe and share it with your fellow mamas. And be sure to comment below with hashtag I am a free mama if you're excited to set better boundaries inside of your business. Um, ah, camera time. Da -na -na -na. Camera time. Oh, everybody's talking and hammering. Guys, please be quiet. Be quiet, please. Guys, you gotta be quiet. Like right now, 2020, baby.